Hello, Amanda Kendall with True Resolve Tax Professionals here. Today I'm going to walk you through how to fill out a Form 433F. This form is going to be used for anyone who wants to set up a payment plan with the IRS and you have a balance under $50,000, but you can't pay it in full in six years to qualify for a streamlined installment agreement, or anyone that owes over $50,000 but is not necessarily self-employed, or you are assigned to the collections department. If you are with a revenue officer, you will want to fill out a form 433A, which you can find in another video. For this form, we are going to be filling this out for James and Amy Johnson. If this address is different than the last filed return, you would be checking this box. In this case, it is not. So we're going to come down to their county of residence and say that they live in Denver County. Next section is going to be your social security number. This is going to be the person listed first on this form, which should match up with the person listed first on a tax return. So you're going to want to enter that. Then you're going to come down and enter. Then you're going to want to come down and list a phone number for at least one of you. If not, both of you. Then the next question is going to be enter the number of people in the household who can be claimed on this year's tax return including you and your spouse. It's going to ask you for under 65 and over 65. Both James and Amy are under 65. They also have a 12 year old son so we're going to put that they have three people to claim under the age of 65 on this year's tax return. You can see here that this does ask you if you or your spouse are self-employed or have self-employment income provide the following information. We're going to go ahead and include that here, but the Form 433A is a much better form to use if you are self-employed. I'm going to plug in James's EIN here, and he does home restoration, but he does not have any employees, so we're going to put that. Next section we get to here is Section A. This is accounts, lines of credits. This is going to include any bank accounts, CDs, retirement accounts, 401ks, KIOs, SEP plans, stocks, bonds, anything that you may have as far as an account. So we're going to say they have a bank account with Wells Fargo. You would want to put in the address here. Account numbers can be entered with X's and just the last four digits. Say they have $100. It is not a business account. They also have an account with Chase Bank. This is a checking account also with $800 in it. They have a savings account with Chase Bank as well that has $100 in it. And then James has a business account with Chase Bank. It is a checking account. It has $1,000 in it. And we are going to mark this box to indicate that that is a business account. Next, we're going to come down to real estate. We're going to put in the description and location. This is a single family home, and it is their home. It is their primary residence. They have a monthly mortgage payment of $1,350. This was purchased in 2014 for $310,000. They have not refinanced it, so we're going to leave those sections blank. The home has a current value of $315,000, and they owe $308,000 on that now, leaving them with an equity of $7,000. That is the only property they own, so we're going to come down to Section C, which is Other Assets. This is going to be your cars, boats, recreational vehicles, whole life policies, anything you have there. So they have a 2006 GMC Envoy. has no monthly payment. It was purchased in 2006. There's no final payment. We're going to bypass that. It has a current value of $4,500, so 
no balance owed, giving us an equity of $4,500. They also have a 2013 Chevy Impala with a monthly payment of $435. This was purchased in 2015. Final payment on that, we're going to say, is June of 2020. It has a current value of $9,500, and they're going to owe $10,800 on that, giving them an equity of $1,300. James and Amy do not own any RVs or whole life policies, so that is going to be the only things in this section. Now you're going to come down to page two, and you're going to enter credit cards here. This is going to be Visa, MasterCard, American Express, or department store credits. You would enter the type, the credit limit, the balance owed, and the minimum, minimum monthly payment. James and Amy do not have any credit cards, so we're going to bypass that information. Now we're going to come down to accounts receivable owed to you or your business. James works for or receives his income from All American Floors and Doors. You would want to put in the address, I'm going to skip that for this form, and you would want to put in the amount that he is owed. He is owed $2,000 by this company at this point, and that is his only accounts receivable that he has. So we're going to list the total amount that he is owed. If you have more than two, you can see here that you would include additional sheets, list the total amount there, and then total it up. Section E2 is going to be completed if your business accepts credit card payments. We're going to say that James does not and bypass that information. Section F is employment information. Current employer name and address. For James, we're going to put in self-employed here but we're not going to fill in any of this information. Amy works for ABC Company. You would want to put in their address here. And we're going to say that she is paid monthly just to keep this simple. She is paid $2,000 a month, has $150 withheld from federal, $50 from state, no local, and she's been with her employer for two years. G is going to be non-wage household income. This is where you're going to list self-employment income. So we're going to say that James makes $5,000 being self-employed here. They do not have any other forms of income, so we're not going to fill anything else out. Now we're down to Section 8, which is our monthly necessary living expenses. Part 1 here is food, personal care. You're going to want to see the instructions as it says, if you do not spend more than the standard allowable amount for your family size, then you're only going to fill in the total amount. These total amounts can be found on the IRS website. Go to www.irs.gov. In the search box, you can type in national standards and it'll bring you to the pages for these. In this case, we're going to say that they do not spend more than the allowable amount for a family of three which is $1,249. Next section two is transportation. Gas, insurance, licenses, parking, maintenance, etc. We're going to say between James and Amy both, they spend $500 a month here, but they do not spend any money on public transportation. They do not rent. We've included their mortgage payment above on page one, if you remember. So we're going to jump down to their utilities and they're going to spend $340 a month in utilities. They're going to spend $250 a month between telephone, cell phone, cable, and internet. Real estate taxes and insurance in this case are going to be escrowed into their mortgage payment and they do not have any maintenance and repairs. Health insurance, they spend $500 a month and out-of-pocket care expenses, they're going to spend $100 a month. Section 5 is going to be our other expenses. They have a 12-year-old son who is in after-school care since they both work. They're paying $600 a month there. James is currently paying $1,000 a month in estimated tax payments to account for his self-employment income. They have $50 a month in term life insurance. Neither one of them are contributing to any retirement at this time or union dues, but they do have a $300 a month payment plan with the state of Colorado for back taxes that are owed there. They do not have any student loan payments, 
court-ordered child support, court-ordered alimony, or any other court-ordered payments. And they do not have any other payments at this point. At this time, you would be signing this form. I do like to point out that you are signing this form under penalty of perjury, so you do want to make sure the information included on this form is accurate and complete based on what you have available. Pages 3 and 4 walk you through some written instructions on this form. If you are having to fill out this form for the IRS and you're confused or unsure if you're doing this properly, please give my office a call. You can reach us locally at 720-319-8954 or you can call us toll free at 866-888-6090. I really hope this video was helpful in filling out this form for you. Thank you.